Okay, so you got a cricket or a silhouette or something cutting machine and you want to make some SVG files for it. So you downloaded Inkscape from Inkscape.org and you opened it and went, oh my god, what is all this? Um, so I'm going to show you some of the basic stuff that you're going to have in, in Inkscape and then if you watch any of my other videos, they might make a little more sense to you because I don't really go over the, uh, the really basic stuff with what I'm clicking on. Um, this panel over here is kind of your toolbox. You're going to use that the most by far. Um, all of the things in all of these drop-down menus, you can either use the drop-down menu and click on them, or you can use the keyboard shortcuts that are all listed alongside them here. You'll see me use mostly the keyboard shortcuts. Um, this is your selector tool. You're going to use that the most. And this is your note editor. You're also going to use that a lot. Let me get some stuff on the screen so I can show you what some of this stuff does. Um, this right here is to put text on the screen. If I click that and just type, hey world, I have text. You see the little flashing cursor. Um, it's just a text box right now. There's not much you can do with it. If I hit the select, right now if you look over here, this is highlighted, but it's blue. If I hit the selector tool instead, the little arrow, it now gets a little box around it with all these arrows. Now you can now you can actually move the box around itself. You can move it, you can reshape it, you can drag it around, make it bigger, do whatever you want with it. If you click on it once, just once, you'll see the arrows all change. Now you can rotate it. You can kind of skew it this way or that way. Do all kinds of neat stuff with it. Um, However, if you double click on this, it's going to go right back to the text because that's what it is. It's not really a path yet. It doesn't have nodes yet. If I try to see nodes, there's nothing there yet. It's just text. Um, if I take, and I'll only keep the text for now. If you go to, if you have this highlighted, whenever it's highlighted, whenever it's selected, you'll have this little box around it while it's selected. If you go up here to go to path, object to path, it's going to turn that into nodes that your machine will cut. If I go to the node editor now and click on any of these letters, you'll see all the little all the little dots. There's little squares, diamonds. If you hold the control key and zoom in with your mouse, that's how you zoom in and out. Hold the control key and scroll. You'll see all these little squares. These are the places where your machine is going to touch down. The blade will stop at every one of these little nodes. Keep that in mind for later when you're looking at an image, um, a design, and there's like 8 billion of these little nodes, your design space is going to give you trouble with it. It's going to tell you it's too complex. It's going to have crashing of your, um, your flash because it's too many nodes for it to handle. Um, so when I transform text like that into a path, it makes all the nodes. It also separates each letter. See, they're all different. Um, you can drag, if I click down here and just drag, I can drag a box around all of these. <coughs> I don't want to see them all. Alright, now you see the little dotted lines around every single letter. So they're, they're all selected. You can hit Path. Union or attach in this case, or uh, combine rather, it doesn't matter which one. If they're overlapping, you would want a union, but I'll get into that. Um, so now we attach them together, and now it's all one path. Um, now you can take that. You can change it different colors while it's selected. If you click on a color, it changes the color of it. Pretty basic. You can do something like Control D is duplicate. If I hit Control D, I have two of them now. You can do Control Z is undo. Now I have one of them again. Um, if I want to make some of the words different colors, make different, add different layers to it, you can use your paint tool down here. Whenever you're going to use your paint tool, make sure you're not clicked on anything. See, right now it's selected. If I hit the paint tool, 
it'll change the color. I didn't have to actually use the paint tool. It didn't work. It just turned it a different color. It's still just one object. If I click off of it, so nothing is selected, and then I click the paint tool, I pick a color, and I just fill in certain letters. Whenever you're done with the paint tool, make sure you click back on your selector so you don't keep turning other things other colors. Now, the ones that we filled in, it actually created a separate object. It's another layer. The original one is still here, but we added these other ones. Um, the shape tools we use a lot. Also, you'll notice next to any of these menus, if you hold over them for a minute, you'll see little tool tips pop up describing what they all do. Take advantage of them. They, they are helpful. Um, so this is to make rectangles and squares. If I click on that and click down anywhere on my page and just drag, it'll drag out a rectangle. Big as, big or as small as you want. If you want that rectangle to be a square, before you do anything else, hit hold the control button and then drag it out and it's a perfect square. Same thing with the circle. If you just click and drag, you can make any shape circle you want. If you want an actual circle, hold control and then drag and it'll stay a perfect circle. Um, when you make a shape, when you make pretty much anything, you want to make sure that it's a path. See if I click on, if I double click on this now, let me back that up. If I double click on this, we know this is an object. We made this before. We filled it in and made a little object out of it, right? And it's a path. If I double click on this, you see all the nodes. And when you double click, it goes to the node editor. If I double click on a shape, I get... Oh, I did get the nodes on that one. You stinker. Sometimes when you make a shape, it doesn't give you an actual path that you can do something with. You have to do object to path. Just something to keep in mind. You don't always have to do it, but I usually do because it helps um, if you're going to do anything else with it later. Um, Bezier tool is probably for another lesson, but if you click on the Bezier tool, if I give it a triangle in, it's going to make, you can make spirals with this. If I click, and then you do click and drag. Click and drag, 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 drag. And then when you're all done, right click, and of course it's white, there's no, yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen. It's there, but you can't see it right now because, why isn't that working? Phone stroke, there it is. Because my stroke style is at zero, that's why you can't see anything. There it is. You can make it as thick as you want, but mine was set to not fill in at all, <laughs> so that's why that happened. Um, but that's how you can make spirals and flourishes and whatnot. You're going to use that tool. Um, what else is really helpful? Another one is Align and Distribute. I use a lot. If I wanted to take this circle and put it in this square, but I wanted it right dead center, I highlight both objects. Go to Object, Align and Distribute, and these two have little tool tips next to all of them if you hold over them, but the pictures are pretty helpful here. This one is going to center vertically. When I click this, watch the picture, it centers them together vertically, and then I can also center them horizontally. If I wanted this object, this object, this one, and this one. And I wanted them all, actually, you know what, not even that. Let's do this. Let's take this circle and we're going to make some copies of it. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. And now we have four circles. We wanted those, here, let me put this one over here. If I drag a box around them, we wanted to first center them. Now they're all on the same height. And now say we wanted them evenly spaced apart. You know how sometimes you're doing all little things and you go like this and you're trying to eyeball it and see if they're the same distance apart? Drag a box around them all. Distribute. We're going to distribute the centers equally. 
Now they're perfectly spaced and they're perfectly aligned. So that's a really helpful little tool. <coughs> um, when you group things together, if I'm going to be using these four dots, I just spent all this time aligning them right. And I want to keep moving them around and changing their size and whatnot. Once they're done that, I can move them around and they stay together. If I hit Object Group, they get one box around them. They're not actually one path yet, but they'll kind of move together until you ungroup them. You can either ungroup them with Object Ungroup, or if you double click on them, that takes them back apart. Control Z undoes whatever you just did. If you wanted them all one actual path, see right now if I go to the path editor, you'll see that each one is its own path. If I wanted them all one path, go path, combine, and now it's all one. You can't, nothing I do is going to make these move by themselves again. They're all one again, unless I break them apart. Um, if we want to bring an image in, you see people trace images a lot. Um, I would go to Google. We'll find some clip art. Uh, whenever you're looking for an image, always look for clip art. Don't just look for an image because you'll get photos and whatnot that are useless to you. Today is the first day of spring, so we're going to do spring clip art. And find something to bring in. All right, let's bring this little birdie in. I'm going to save him. Save image as. I'm just going to save it to my desktop. And then in here, file import. I'm on my desktop already, so I'm going to find that image that I just saved. It's my little bird. And we're going to bring him in. I don't change any of these settings, I just bring it in. Control zoom out, because he's enormous. While I'm holding control, I drag him down so he's smaller. Make sure you're holding control or you'll change. He'll get warped, he'll, like you'll lose the aspect ratio. Okay, so now we have this cute little bird. If we go to Path, Trace Bitmap, and you get this little box. In here, the only things I change, change it to color, unless you're doing a black and white image and then you can just do grays. Take off smooth, and add remove background, and I'll show you why in a second. And then if I hit live preview, there's my bird. Whoops, I unclicked that by accident. There it is. And then we're going to drop the number of scans is the how many colors. This is a pretty simple image. It's a blue, it's an orange, it's a black. So we'll probably end up with three. Why am I frozen? And I just lower this until I get to where I lost too much color. See there, I just lost the blue. Too little. So we go back up to four. Something else is running on my computer right now. Apparently that's bogging this down really bad. So I apologize for that. You hit OK, and then you close that. Let me get rid of all this for the moment here. Now, it doesn't look any different, but if you click on any part where there's color and just drag, you'll see you have two images now. One of them, you see how there's no white there? You can see the black line through it. There's no background. That box that we unchecked that said remove background, that's what it did. This one, Oh, this one actually did not have a background. It was probably a PNG image, but that's your original. We're going to get rid of that. Usually you'll see a solid white background around it. But now this is our SVG copy. And you see it's all moving together. Remember before I showed you, once you group something, you can kind of move it together, but it's not really together. It's just temporarily together. You can either ungroup this, which I find doesn't always work, that's how it did. Or you can just double click it and it'll ungroup. And then you have different layers. We have a blue layer, we have a black layer, and we have an orange layer. We don't really want this whole orange layer for just the nose. There's no need to cut all of this stuff out of orange for just the nose, so we're going to get rid of that. If I do Control Z until I put these back together, 
they're back where they were. Or you can just do the, you can, if I did take them all apart and I didn't know how to get them back together, drag a box around them, align and distribute, and center them vertically and horizontally, and they're back together. <coughs> so now we have our layers. We are going to, even the blue layer, you don't really need this because you don't need the legs to be blue. All we really want is the bird itself to be blue. So I would actually get rid of this. And I would get rid of this orange layer too. And then what you do is you're going to color this in. Right now you see this object is selected. You have a little box around it. Get off of that. Click anywhere else on the screen so that nothing is selected. Then go to your little paint bucket here. And we're going to fill in this bird. We're going to make him this color. And just click on the parts of it that you want to be blue. If you didn't want him all blue and you wanted his tail, tail maybe we wanted his tail to be yellow. We're going to give him a yellow tail. So it doesn't really matter what your... The picture that you brought in, how it started, really doesn't matter. You can change the colors however you want once you start breaking it down. And then we're going to make his beak orange. Whoops, I made his tail orange. It was still selected. Undo. Didn't mean to do that. Go back to the select tool. Make sure nothing is there. Paint bucket. Orange. And there's his beak. So now we have all these pieces. This we want to stay together. All the blue. So what you're going to do is click, hold your shift key, and click on each of the pieces that you want to stay together. Now they're all selected. You can either do path union or control plus plus. This is the keyboard shortcut for that. And now that's one object, which is what we wanted. But now we have this black outline. If you wanted to cut this, that's great that it looks the way you wanted it to look but for a couple of reasons you don't want to do it this way. First of all, when you try to cut this black, these lines are really, really fine. You're going to weed this, and you're going to lose half of it. It's going to be kind of a pain. Also, if you're doing it as, like, heat transfer vinyl, or even regular vinyl, um, when you try to layer it on top of each other, it's going to be really hard to lay it absolutely perfectly in those lines, and you'll have little white spaces that show up because you didn't layer it perfectly. So we're going to avoid all of that by making this solid. So what we're going to do here is take this path, break apart. And that took all of those little nodes, all the little cut points, and broke them all apart. See all the little squares in there? Now we have to take this and union it so that it becomes one path. We do not want all of that junk. Union. And now if we go to our node editor, you'll see that it's all one path, and this is your cut lines. Something else you can do, I'm not sure, it doesn't always work, but it's always worth a try. Depending on how small you are, if you were going to cut this, and you were cutting it like two inches tall, that's a lot of cut points for something that's only two inches tall. You're going to hear your machine touching down a lot. So you might want to simplify this. Sometimes you'll get an image, um, you'll bring it into Inkscape and see that there's like 3,000 nodes just all the way around it. You need to simplify it. It looks all choppy. So you can go to Path, Simplify, and watch what it does. It just took out a lot of the choppiness. Problem is sometimes it takes out too much and you lose too much definition and then that's not good. You can always just undo it if it's too much. But we're going to try it. We're going to put this here. See, he still looks pretty good. I don't think we lost too much there. We'll drag this back on top of there. We'll drag his tail, and that's our image. We can group it together. We can save it as an SVG. We can cut it, do whatever we want with it. That's great. <coughs> Another thing that you like to do is, if I have this text here, zoom back in on this. You see people want to make shadow text. You hear about that all the time. You want a layer behind it of shadow text. So I have this. It's a path. We'll make sure it's a path. If we look at the nodes, you can see all the nodes. While it's selected, you go to Path, Link to Offset. And that gives you 
this little diamond here. That diamond is what you need to make the shadow layer. The first thing I do when I'm doing this is change the color. It's not going to change the color of the object, it will change the color of the layer you're creating so you can see it, because see what happens if I try to do this. It just looks like it's swelling. Not really helpful. See, I can see the inner layer in there if you highlight it. If you, like, roll over it, undo. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, now we're going to change the color so it's orange. Now when I do this, I can see the other color. If I just want a really fine outline, you can do it like that. If I want, like, that whole cloudy looking thing behind it, you can do that. But right now I'm going to show you something else though. So we have this layer there. We're going to do that. First thing you're going to see, if you go back to select, is you have two objects. Yay! What I was telling you before though about making things paths, if you go to the node editor, you see all the nodes. If you go to the node editor here, you don't. This right now, if I drag this, I can still make it bigger or smaller. I want this to actually look the way this does. I want it to be nodes. So I have to do path, object to path. Whenever you take text and manipulate it, if you um, add text effects and bend it and warp it and do all kinds of stuff, you always have to make it a uh, path again when you're done. So now we have two objects here. I'm going to put this one back on top of this one. I'm going to oops, I gotta select them both. I'm going to center them so they're sitting right on top of each other again. And now, if I wanted this, if you go to path, difference, this is like slice in um, design space. It took the red one out of the orange one, so now you have a hollow um, word. That becomes really helpful too. That's Those are fun to play with. You can also do things like, if you go to path, path effects, you get this little pop up here. You click your plus button, and these are all effects you can use. Most of them I don't use, very few of them actually. The ones I really use a lot are bend and envelope deformation. I'm going to show you bend because it's easier. If we add that, you see this right here looks a lot like this over here. And if you roll over it, it says edit on canvas. What this does is give you, it puts a deadline across the middle of it, and that's how you bend this. We're going to bend our text. You see people making Starbucks cups, and you want to if I wanted to make this like, whoops, make it kind of all warpy shape, you can see how it just moves around. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now say that's the way I wanted it, just that shape. And again, if I look at the note editor, it's still down here. It doesn't recognize the changes because I can still move this if I want to. I have to again, object to path. And now, it's a path the way I wanted it. Always keep that in mind. <coughs> so now we have that. And what other things are really, really helpful in here? You can also, if you have text, we want to shape the text as text. We can add a shape. Select both the text and the shape. And there's this whole text drop down menu. <coughs> we could put this text on that path. Some people like to do their the Starbucks cups and what they do it this way. Works too, just another way to do it. Um, but that's something else you can play with. You can make like a Bezier curve. And then you can put oops. This this. If you hold, I just hold the shift button and you can collect it. Keep clicking different objects and it'll select them all. If I hold one, shift, hold the other, I selected them both. Or you can just drag a box around them. And then we go to text, put on path, and we can put, we'll go back to this, we can actually add some more text and keep going. <coughs> Make your text any shape you want. While it's on that path, you can do other things like these up here are for text editing. This one says spacing between lines. This is one line that's not going to help. Um, 
spacing between letters, we can make the letters further apart. You can also, if you're going to do, <coughs> let's add more text. Now if we did our line spacing, we can bring them closer together. You can even have them on top of each other. Um, so yeah, you got to spend some time actually playing around with all this stuff. You can change the font. I have 8 million fonts, so mine generally take me forever to check fonts. Um, no, this one is for shapes. These are to make stars, polygons. This is about as easy as it gets for a perfect star. You click. And you drag out your star. How cool is that? Um, you can also... See now that was what I was talking about, how it's not a path. I double clicked on it, and all I get is this. Because I can change the shape of my star. Of course, right? if I want that to actually be a path, I have to go object path. Um, make spirals. If you don't, if you just need it to be a spiral and you don't need it to be thinner or thicker at one end, that works just fine. And that is most of what I use in there. That's most of what you'll see me use when I do things. Um, if you wanted to take this spiral, for example, and turn that into a path, you would do stroke to path. And now if you zoom in on it, you'll see that there's actually instead of just a stroke, you have these um, nodes side by side, so you can actually drag one of them out. You can change the shape of your spiral that way. You can also warp it, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. But that's, it's, Inkscape is fun to just go in and play around with. I definitely encourage you to spend some time just playing with it and see what happens. So hopefully that was helpful. We did a little bit of a trace, we did some text stuff, I showed you where all the buttons are, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message. Uh, put a message after the video, or you can email me at wendye524 at gmail.com. And uh, hopefully this helps, and hope to see you again. Thanks.